Hey everyone, welcome back to Pretending with Dice. As always, I'm your host and game master, AJ. Uh, I want to start this episode with just a huge, huge thank you to all of you for your patience in waiting just a little bit longer than normal for this episode. Uh, I won't go into full details, uh, but let's just say that uh, the pandemic and uh, some other kind of unavoidable uh, things got in the way of uh, my uh, editing schedule <laughs> yet again. Um, and uh, as a group, we all thought it would be best to just kind of push the releases back into April from March. Um, I know this isn't the first time, even this year, I mean, uh, maybe even the last episode, I can't remember, <laughs> that, uh, that I've had to apologise for missing planned release dates. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I just want to say a huge, huge thanks for your continuing patience, and uh, I hope you'll all find it worth the wait. Secondly, uh, before we jump into the episode, I want to say a big thanks to Fiona from uh, What Am I Rolling and the DM's Book Club podcast, uh, who you all may remember joined me for an interview episode last year, uh, for providing a guest voice for this episode. Uh, I won't spoil the scene ahead of time, um, but it was a lot of fun getting to record the guest spot with her. Uh, so yeah, you can check out her podcast uh, at uh, where underscore podcast, that's W-A-I-R, and at the DM's Book Club on Twitter. And if you haven't heard it already, I'd highly recommend uh, going back to uh, the interview episode that we um, recorded last year. It was uh, yeah, a super interesting conversation, and uh, yeah, check it out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I think um, I think that that's all I've got for this intro. Um, so I won't keep you waiting any longer. Um, I know you've <laughs> waited long enough for this episode. Uh, so yeah, let's get into it. Enjoy. Let's begin the following morning, as we ended the last episode uh, with you all clocking off for the night. The Tenzing has continued its slow, de deliberately slow I should say, sub-warp passage through the Dratiran system overnight, uh, with the Dratiran homeworld as its eventual destination. Uh, as previously established, this is for a variety of connected reasons. Uh, you're trying to avoid detection by anyone on the planet itself, in an attempt not to break the Prime Directive any further than it may already have been. Uh, you're seeing what additional information you can maybe get from your two Dratiran guests, uh, Rane and Varai. And also, importantly, you're waiting for additional instructions from Starfleet Command following your reports last night about the situation. I want to start by kind of um, checking in with each of you to see how you're starting the day, as we, as we ended with uh, uh, you sort of ending the previous day. Uh, Ray, how, how are you beginning the day? Well, <clears throat> usually in Star Trek they're awake at 0700 to start something, so I would assume that we're, I would assume that I'm ready to, I'm already dressed and ready to report for duty. Okay. Well, you're telling me that. I don't need to assume. I'm, I'm asking you what Ray's doing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if it's 0700, then Ray will be up on the bridge um, <coughs> at the scanners, just checking as the ship's moving, which he's going to be scanning, looking for anything that might even resemble something that could pick up the ship's presence as we approach the planet. Okay. So long-range sensors and just keeping an eye. So kind of seeing what their capabilities are. Yeah, I mean, based on what... Ray said, I think Ray was the one who said it in the conference, you know, last thing we want to do is appear suddenly out of the night sky. Hmm. So if we go in slowly and just keep watch and scan for anything that might pick us up and alert them to our presence before we manage to get there and make, it, and make a decision. Hmm. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be up on the bridge about 0700 and operating the long range sensors and okay. scanning. Well, let's do a check for that then. Um, Okie dokie. Can I get a reason science check from you then? Uh, difficulty one. And uh, also a sensor science check from uh, one of you as the Tenzing's contribution. 
15 and a 1. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, there's the there's critical success for me then. Um, so you've already got two successes just on the one, so that's three successes just from you <laughs> on a difficulty one check. Ray obviously woke up on the right side of the bed <laughs> this morning. Uh, can I or can I also get that tensing check from one of you others then, just, just, for, just in the name of doing all the checks, but already passed. <laughs> there you go. Hey, you didn't got that. Okay. Hey. Uh, so that's a 12 for the, se- the tensing systems. Uh, yeah, I mean, with the tensing sensors are kind of the... The, be- the sort of most beefed up system really on here. You were trying to get below 16 on that. So four successes on a difficulty one check. Um, I haven't got a note uh-huh. here of what you, where you guys were at with momentum, but um, technically it's meant to, you meant to lose a point with every scene as it's the start of a new day. And I can't remember where we were at before. The fact that you guys just gained three momentum is probably, let's say you're at uh-huh. three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have it in my notes. Where is it? I think we have two. Two. Okay. As you guys have kind of, you've had a night's rest. Let's say you lost, you went down from two to one, and that roll has just added three onto it. So you're at four now. Okay. So yeah, I mean that's a really good, that's a really good scan there, Ray. Good job. You knew what you were looking for and you looked at it. Um, yep. <laughs> uh, was it there? That's yeah. the question. <laughs> yeah, you you sort of angled the ships. Um, scanners towards the Deterrent homeworld and uh, you're able to kind of get a pretty comprehensive sort of rundown of their technical ability in terms of sensor arrays and things like that. You know, the the Federation database has got a, a pretty um, extensive catalogue of different types of arrays and telescopes and things so it's able to kind of take a best guess when it approaching new things as to what the capabilities would be and you know it's generally pretty accurate on that. The Jeterans, you may remember from uh, the early briefing, are about uh, analogous to kind of mid to late twenty first century Earth, but definitely not up to the um, sort of scanning <laughs> state of um, Earth itself in the twenty fourth century. They've got some space based uh, telescopes, but generally they seem to be kind of more like astronomy equipment really you're not picking up any kind of active scanning equipment in space at all as far as ground-based stuff there is um again a a sort of a few sort of arrays that the the computer kind of flags as like we think this is also a a telescope of some sort in in varying kind of mediums as well not just optical but it, it can't really speculate as to how often those are checked and they're probably not attenuated for looking for approaching starships because, as far as you know, the Deterrents have not been contacted by any other um, major galactic power or anything. You know, they're not going to be looking for approaching starships, essentially. Um, so their equipment is not really geared for that. That is sort of the rundown that you get on your screen from running these scans. I would say it's not an instant <laughs> thing. This is over the course of let's say an hour or so of just doing a f- if you know a few different sort of scans and things yeah no, that's cool okay yeah what would you like to do with this information well i would i'm just, well i would wait until the captain is present on the bridge and if he asks for a report provide him with it okay all right because all i know he could still be asleep fair enough um, I will say, <laughs> it's alright, no, don't want to wake him up. Um, he gets cranky in the mornings. Um, mm. <laughs> uh, I, will, I forgot to say as well, uh, Commander Talyn is on the bridge as well. She is in the captain's chair, sort of super- supervising. Okay. Not looking over your shoulder or anything, she is, you know, mm. just in command at the moment. She's you think she would in want- the chair. <laughs> she's, in the, she's in the big man's chair. Um, do you think she'll want an update? Oh, but that's up to you. Commander, the sensor sweep is completed. As far as we can tell, the Deuterian homeworld doesn't have any majorly advanced scanning technology or sensor arrays around their planet, either on orbit or on the surface. So, for all intents and purposes, to them, we are just a star in the night sky. Very well. Thank you, Commander. Sir? All right. Uh, anything else you want to do, Ray? Uh... I'll be standing at the station and... Uh, I'll be there until such time as I'm not. Okay, well, that's Ray then. Um, how about you, Dr. Arela? How are you starting your day? I 
think I'd probably be just double checking the scans that we took of the doterans hmm. um, and making sure that there's if anything goes less than smoothly <laughs> with this plan <laughs> um, that we would be able to treat them as efficiently as possible okay sure thinking if there's a way to do this that isn't just me saying do me a medical check um but I don't think there is really you're kind of the medical check is going to be sort of you using your sort of knowledge to go over it and see if you know you're going over it with an eye towards does anything jump out as like oh that's going to be a bit tricky or anything Mm -hmm. yeah okay uh can I just get a reason medicine check there's an 18 and a 4 uh, again I keep forgetting to say the difficulty um, but I was going to say difficulty 1 anyway so you, <laughs> you got your one success um, yeah I mean how, how long would you like to spend on this we, we could say this is sort of you, you kind of set yourself up in your office as like for the morning and this is your, your sort of personal project you've got enough staff to sort of be manning sick bay if this is what you want to be focusing on for the morning yeah kind of a couple of hours probably just to just to be sure and see whether any of the, like the like the automatic settings for other species, like if we can use like the same basics that we do for humans for mm. them, or if it needs, yeah, just whatever slight adjustments might be needed. Sure. Yeah. Are you able to? Okay. So yeah, let's say then. So over the course of a couple of hours, um, you go over the scans that you took of the um, the two uh the previous day. Um, you cross-reference them with the um, on-file scans that you have from the original Starfleet um, science team visit from a few years back. And uh, yeah, they seem to be sort of fairly typical specimens of their species would be a a, a good way of putting it. There's not like any major discrepancies between the the older scans and the the ones you took yourself. In terms of using standard equipment, I mean, every species has a slightly different body chemistry anyway, some of them majorly. There's definitely going to be a few adjustments to be made, but nothing sort of out of the ordinary. You're not going to have to fabricate any kind of specific equipment to to deal with anything. You're just going to have to sort of bear in mind, like, okay, if there's a few sort of, there's a few maybe painkillers you can't really use that are with them that might have a reaction. There's a, some adjustments to be made when replicating, a few, you know, well, a few different piece, bits and pieces here and there um, but again nothing too major it's more just sort of like it's stuff that you don't have to think about really too much with the regular kind of crew of the ship which is you know it's a fairly big mix of different federation species but between your own knowledge and that of your uh, staff and the computer sort of anticipating when you're replicating things that's not usually something you need to sort of worry about you know you, you know you know offhand like oh no humans can't use this um vulcan's gonna have a reaction to that um so this is more just kind of adding another mental (laughs) note and note on the files themselves like okay if we need to do this this is gonna have to be at this ph or something like that yeah again nothing too major but um Mm -hmm. yeah you're able to identify a few different things there that can be done so yeah i'd say that that, that's a morning for you (laughs) yeah all right Let's say Murphy then. How we, uh, what, what, are, what are you doing? And as your Johnny's boss, I will let you decide where you're sending him. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I was going to say that I was going to report in to work and yeah. meet Murphy. So this is like, <laughs> well, I wouldn't be there because I would be on the later, a slightly later shift. <laughs> <laughs> Perks of command, you get Currently. a lion. Yeah, well, no, because I, I'd w- um, Murphy's going to wake up early and perform uh, her prayers for the prophets. Right, okay. Um, and then head to the holodeck for a brief gym session. Sure, okay. And then head, and then have a quick shower and then head into work. Okay. <laughs> head into her office with her coffee mug in hand. <laughs> okay. Um, like what, what's Murphy... Okay, well, here's the question then. So we've already seen mm-hmm. Johnny's um, ass-kicking simulation for... Yeah, go on then. How, well, no, we don't have to go into full detail. I just want to... Um, <laughs> I just want to know what Murphy's holodeck selection is because the ship just has regular gyms if she's going to yeah. the holodeck oh to... no it's a it's a sparring session with a cardassian okay. of course oh okay there's, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack there then <laughs> murphy's got she's her, done own... her prayers yeah. now it's now it's time to go and um deal with her anger 
<laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> So is this, is this a particular Cardassian that you got in mind, or is no, it just, it's a, just a, no? It's just a generic Cardassian. It doesn't um, look like the one that she you does got in. enjoy. <laughs> she does enjoy like some of the um, like skirmishes because obviously they'll have like a uh, holod, holod, holographic record of some of like the battles between yeah. like Federation troops and um, Cardassian troops on the outer planets. So she'd probably in her free time with a few of her friends maybe like <laughs> jump in and one of them obviously like some of the some of the like uh, federation victories but like she like enjoys the reenactment of it a bit okay well, this is a new thing uh, this is a new thing we're <laughs> learning about murphy she's into reenactments but like super intense actual <laughs> reenactments <laughs> um fair enough okay Maybe not just before work, though. Is that what we're thinking? No, 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 no. It would just be a, a brief, like, sparring session, just to get her, sure, get her blood pumping and okay, get well, her, make her wake her up for the day. Let, let's do a roll then for that. Um, All right. <laughs> so I, I guess just to <laughs> invest me. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to get a fit uh, a fitness security roll off of you to see how we how um how this uh, sparring session goes <laughs> so you're aiming for 15 or under and 2d20 so difficulty 2D 1 because this is you know it's just a sparring session but yeah 10 and 4 10 and 4 yeah that's your two successes nice okay well, that's another momentum <laughs> point then I guess <laughs> up to 5 momentum um, again remember you guys can spend these at any point um, <laughs> and they do they do fade away over time well, um, her parents died on the on the border planets, so hmm. it's it's quite it's it's it, it, it does kind of mean something to her that way that like if she had maybe done something differently in the in the like if they had, if they had done something differently in the battle maybe they could have like survived or something so like calculating those kind of yeah. odds she enjoys that okay oh that, that with the reenactment stuff rather than the sparring yeah. session okay yeah yeah, yeah no yeah no, no the sparring That's, session cool. just makes sense. Ass. I mean, again, we, we, the longer we go, the more sessions we do, the more psychological issues are coming to the fore with all of the characters. <laughs> <And> <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying everybody needs a therapy session, but <laughs> there's, there's, some, there's some stuff to unpack there, I think, with Murphy, um, with the Cardassians thing. Cause we already have that backstory thing of you where you, you were held up from having a um, promotion for a while because you got in a fight with some Cardassians. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so... Uh, I mean, let's not do that now. But <laughs> so yes, <laughs> you, you wake up, you have a peaceful time saying your prayers. I would say, is it peaceful for you, or is this? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah it's it's just a, a nice way to like um, collect my thoughts in the morning and yeah, and get and get organized. Sure, you have your sparring session, which goes really well. You feel warmed up for the day ahead. You get your coffee, and as you approach um, your office in the the tactical section, um, which is on deck eleven, tactical planning. That's where your that's where your office is. That's what I got written down. Uh, you see uh, Connor sort of hanging around in the main office bit. Um, seem to be waiting patiently for you. Oh, I'm just gonna sigh because I was hoping my 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 other officer was going to give him a job <laughs> and I'm like oh I'm going to give you a job okay um morning con art morning how are we today it's quite a uh, it, quite an interesting day yesterday L lots of information from those uh, aliens that we picked up have you thought on the okay. ship at all well I had dreams last night I did have that that we had Zephyr and Cochrane on board but that was about it for the evening mm -hmm. we had a discussion with the senior team but we're going to meet again today hopefully with some more information with more orders from Starfleet once the captain's confirmed it I'm going to go into the office and sit at my desk Johnny kind of follows her in and stands in front of the desk I know you need a job, Connor. I know. I'm thinking. I'm just awake. I've had a bit of a sparring session this morning. I'm just letting my coffee settle. Well, I was. Have you hoping. checked on our guests well, this morning? Um, not as yet. I was. I was interested to find out whether or not I'd uh, be uh, on mission for this, because obviously I would, 
I've seen a lot, and this is fascinating. Can you give me a, an idea of what do you think of them? What do you think of these Tritirians? Well, you spent a lot of time with them yesterday. To say that they're timid would perhaps be an understatement, though, in fairness, this is quite an intense experience for them. I mean, your dream of Zephyr and Cochrane perhaps is, is quite apt insofar as this is their first time in space and I mean even within their culture it seems they seem to be outliers so we're going to have to be careful I think especially in the way that we approach the planet I think this is a more of a case of a dip diplomatic situation than a, a tactical one in my opinion for the moment anyway they don't seem to be a violent species at all from what I gather and these two individuals especially just seem more curious about their wider universe which might scare the, the larger population so yes we have to deal with it delicately we're waiting on a little bit more direction from Starfleet um, check on our guests, see how they are um, make sure they've they have eaten and they're doing okay um, just generally keep an eye on them for me Connor I am going to wrap up a few things that I have to have here and then I'm going to head up to the bridge I sir and Johnny gives a little salute and um, heads out with a sense of purpose Yeah. Murphy's just gotten to the point where she just ignores him when, when, she, when he salutes He's just, she's just like yeah okay you don't have to Oh, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, She's no, just I, gotten I, used to it now. <laughs> yeah, I like it as a thing. I like it that Johnny's like, yeah, Nick, you're you're in a good, you're you're excited to do stuff, and you're like, yeah, I got my orders. I'm going to salute, oh. kind of thing. Just earnest. Yeah, what no, no, no. I'm, again, I'm not knocking you. <laughs> no, no, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying with a smile, saying it. <laughs> um, so yeah, Johnny's going to head off and um, okay, meet the Dratirans at, at their uh, room. We'll, uh, unless uh, you had anything else you immediately wanted to do, Murphy, we'll follow Johnny, I think. No, no, no. So, yes, you uh, you head up to guest quarters. Um, it's a different pair of uh, crewmen standing outside the, the doors on guard when you get there than, than the pair that were there when you left last night. Um, obviously, there's been a shift change in between, so, yeah, they, they, uh, they see you approach there. They're already kind of... They're not... Sort of, they don't sort of snap to attention or anything, but um, kind of... Uh, catch your eye and sort of nod as you approach uh, morning Anson morning uh, I'm here to uh, attend to our guests have we had any uh, incidents any uh, anything in the night uh, not as far as I know uh, sir um, we haven't really heard much from them at all well I'll take that as good news for now and he gives them both a nod and uh, kind of steps towards the door and I'm assuming it automatically opens. We didn't lock them in there, did we? I don't think we. I don't think you said you locked them in. No, we just pe put people outside just in case they came out to kind of coax them back in. I suppose to be like, no, 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 you need to stay in here. I don't know if it was so much coax them back in so much as like if they wanted to come out, there was somebody there just in case, you know, to to deal with any requests or anything. You weren't like, okay, seal them in. <laughs> We've got them where we want them. <laughs> I think like that. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, Johnny goes into the room. Sure. You step in and you uh, you notice the, the lights are, are down quite low. They're not out, but the, the pair of the Dratirans are in there um, and they are sitting cross-legged on uh, on the ground uh, in front of one of the viewports. Uh, at first you think they're kind of staring out, but then you notice that their eyes are closed and um, it almost looks like they're kind of meditating a little bit. Okay. I want to be tacked for here. Um, how far away is Johnny from these people? Like a couple of meters. I mean, guess I mean quarters aren't huge, but okay. I think it does show them on the show a little bit a couple of times, but they're not they're not huge, huge. Okay, so Johnny kind of steps in and goes, <clears throat> um, "Good morning." They yeah, uh, they sort of they 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 almost they both kind of almost uh, synchronize, sort of jump at your voice as well as they didn't hear you come in um, at all, and they uh, they stand up. Ah, oh, uh, uh, good morning, uh, Enton, uh, Connaught, Johnny. Uh, how was the, uh, how was the night? Uh, how was the room? It was, uh, most, most comfortable, um, more than, more than we are accustomed to. 
I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that. Um, have you helped yourselves to food? Is there anything that I can help you with? Um, I can't remember if you showed them how to use a replicator. No, I, I got the food for them last time, I guess. Yeah. Although I, there was that brief moment where I, I showed them the amen amenities in the room. Yes. So arguably at that point, I would have given them a very brief crash course, I suppose. Yeah. But okay. whether or not Johnny told them anything more than how to replicate what they'd already had, well, that's I don't a, know. That's a good question. <laughs> Hot dogs for breakfast. Mm. <laughs> I mean, the, the reality of the replicators and the computers is that you can basically eat anything and the computer adjusts it to be a, a healthy intake of um, everything that you need mm -hmm. really so sure they could have had hot dogs for breakfast and it wouldn't have been <laughs> bad at all but um, yeah they, they sort of um, nod and say ah um, oh, yes uh, thank you everything was most satisfactory thank you oh excellent um, well I've been put in charge of looking after you for the day um, I'm just thinking on what we could perhaps do. Is there anything that you're curious about? Is there anything I could um, show you, tell you, take you through? Anything about our culture, our history? They uh, they quietly kind of confer um, briefly before turning back to you. We would like to know more about the universe. Well, that's, that's a very broad question. I mean, it's all out there. Any gestures towards the viewport? <laughs> Uh, we've only charted a very small amount of it, arguably. There's still a great many frontiers for us to uh, adventure and see what's on the edge of. I suppose to yourselves, this is uh, the first step. And Johnny smiles. I suppose I could take you to one of my favourite places on the ship. I like that even Johnny's getting a little bit aware that... <laughs> Dear God. That you said straight away you were like, one of my favourite places... You're building up to it. Stellar Ferengi Sweat Lodge. It's, it's Stellar the Cartography. No, it's the Ferengi Sweat Lodge on Ricer. Oh, Johnny's <laughs> going for the mind-blowing visual power of the holodeck. Yeah, and a Ferengi yeah. Sweat Lodge on Ricer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's mind-blowing in a different way. <laughs> but still, um, okay. yeah, so Johnny's going to take him down to the holodeck and uh, with the intention of a genuinely educational um, sort of trip mm. and um, I'm trying to think if there'd be kind of like an app description for exactly what I'd want to show them. Is there something to do with the universe in, in terms of its composure where they are in relation to our planet perhaps general history of how we got in space a little bit about the Federation. Okay. Give them a full crash course I suppose in, t in terms of just like here it is this is what you're, you found yourselves in. Kind of the museum tour then. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you don't have any trouble booking out some time uh, right away in uh, one of the holodecks, uh, especially as you're escorting the Dratirans around as kind of VIPs and, and whatnot. Um, so you're able to kind of head straight there. So, you shortly arrive outside the holodeck, and the wall panel next to the doors is uh, waiting for your instructions. <laughs> what do you ask the computer to show you? Hmm... Um... Give me a computer, give me a brief history of the Federation 101 and supplementals to do with um, this system and its relation to our own and the history between the two. Working. Program complete. Enter when ready. Johnny uh, looks, looks at the two of them and says, prepare yourselves. This may you blow your minds just a little bit. This place is quite impressive. But I assure you it's completely safe, and this should give you a quick rundown. Well, I say quick, this may take an hour or two, or maybe even a little bit more than that. But you're going to know everything by the time we're done. Without further ado, the holodeck. And Johnny smiles, smiles wildly and does a little, not, not a quite like Willy Wonka bow with the arms <laughs> out to the side, but he does a kind of like little gesture of like, welcome and breathes them into the room. Welcome to Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say um, given that Connor got in trouble <laughs> because he tampered with the holodeck last time. Yeah. Will <laughs> would <laughs> I'm just I just don't know if Murphy would have like 
put in an alert to when he like activated the holodeck the next time. Johnny goes within ten feet of a holodeck door, <laughs> like she gets pinged. Um. <laughs> but then I'm thinking maybe it won't because it's like a it's like a educational kind of level program, so yeah. it's not it's not like a, a violent program. So it might just like leave it. <laughs> Fair enough. Jo- the it's idea Johnny, crossed my mind. It's not Johnny. You got to worry about going near the holodeck. It's Bonge. <laughs> Because if Bond is going near the whole deck at the yeah, same time as Johnny, that's where the danger zone is. Um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Been in the Bob. danger zone. <laughs> so yeah, I, well, no. Okay, so yeah, you don't get a ping, okay. but I yeah. like I like the thought. Um, <laughs> so the holodeck doors open, and the three of you step inside into the bright sunshine of a warm Florida afternoon. Greeting you is a sight which you've definitely seen before, Johnny but never fails to fill you with a sense of awe. Several hundred metres away, yet still towering above you, is a huge white and black rocket. Both you and the Dratiran stare up at it in wonder, and you begin to hear from all around you a voice. July 16th, 1969. Cape Canaveral, Earth. Three humans, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, embark on a historic spaceflight, Apollo 11, which will make them the first of their species to set foot on another world. The rocket blasts off from the pad in front of you, and even for you, Johnny, uh, someone who works in space, it's an incredible sight, unlike anything that Starfleet does anymore. As the three of you are engulfed in the expanding exhaust plume, uh, the environment shifts around you, uh, keeping you with the action as narrated. The whole world watches as they make their unprecedented landing on Earth's moon. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Mankind's first giant leap towards the stars. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. They weren't to know that theirs would be the first small steps towards the formation of an interstellar community spanning thousands of light years of space, hundreds of sentient species, and over 350 member worlds. Welcome to the history of the United Federation of Planets. The music swells and the scene around you of the lunar surface fades away, to be replaced with a large representation of the Federation crest and the program's title superimposed over it. be nearly 200 years between the flight of Apollo 11 and the founding of the Federation in 2161 when the peoples of Earth, Vulcan, Andoria and Tella came together to formulate the constitution of the Federation in the wake of the Earth-Romulan War. We shall start our story a little earlier, however, with the momentous first warp flight of Earth's Zephron Cochrane just under 315 years ago in 2063. As as the progression of like the Apollo series and all of the uh, sort of progression towards the first warp flight is taking place, Johnny is kind of like keeping an eye on his guests. Mm. I guess they're his guests at this point for now. Um, but um, how how are they looking throughout the whole thing? Are they like are they coping well with what's going on? Because I can't imagine that technologically this is anything that they're sort of like remotely aware of in the uh yeah i mean as it goes on the sense of wonder increases um they i mean they're really the the, the concept of the holodeck itself like they you know they seem incredibly 
first there's a little bit of you know sort of like fear about what what is this what are we outside kind of thing um I, d I don't know whether you want to explain that to them or not <laughs> i'll leave that up to you we don't need to have that conversation but whether you would johnny have gone if this isn't real this is all fake or is he just gonna let the wonder the, the wash over. The preface that I gave, I think, was all that's going to have been said. Okay. I mean, he's, unless they're truly like, they're not like afraid or anything. If they're in awe, then that's kind of like Johnny's kind of enjoying, yeah. after a fashion, seeing something that a lot of people don't see, which is somebody that's being culturally wowed. That like they're they're, they're witnessing something that's a grand spectacle that to him is not quite mundane because this is a holodeck and Johnny loves them. But yeah. It's it's a fascinating cultural moment, mm. I'd say. So with that in mind then, once they kind of adjust to the idea of like, okay, well no, this is a projection, they kind of tend to figure it they seem to figure it out. But you're they the still the awe is there. Um the actual starting with the Apollo program stuff, you I mean you, you, as well as you can pick up, I mean you're not an empath like Irela or anything, but just from sort of I would imagine, like, this is stuff Johnny knows, so you're probably kind of keeping a pretty... You're pretty much checking out to see what their reaction is, I would imagine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. You kind of get the feeling like the Apollo stuff isn't that crazy to them. I mean, they are a um, species that has got satellites in orbit and things, and they have... Well, these two have obviously been on their own space flight, so this is not, you know, completely out of the realms of reality for them. The hmm. early, The early, early space flight stuff... From the ashes of a devastating world war, which had ravaged the lands and peoples of Earth, hope would be rekindled as the brilliant engineer, operating from a remote research base, launched the vehicle which he dubbed the Phoenix. Simple by the standards of today's modern Starfleet ships, Cochrane's design was nonetheless a major milestone in humanity's development, and his short warp flight across the solar system on April 5th, 2063, was to attract the notice of a passing Vulcan science vessel, the Teplana Huff. The main thing that Johnny, is, I mean, keeping an eye on them, like he's keeping track of the simulation, when it approaches the point where we're seeing Zephyrin Cochrane going into space and yes. doing the first warp flight, he is particularly attentive to them. Is there any reaction when they see the ship? Can I get an insight security check from you? Uh, just difficulty one. Oh, I got one. Well, you got your one. Okay, that's cool. There's definitely like, I mean, they, they've been kind of both like staring around a lot of uh, the, uh, the everything that's being shown. When this is shown, they both kind of look at each other quite sort of quickly, like that looks. And you you kind of get a sort of little bit of a feeling of recognition. The, this section of the hologram has been updated recently as well with actual scans from the Enterprise crew um, so this is you know it's, it's <laughs> this is as, a, as an up to date hologram as you're going to get really on this okay. sort of thing um, so seeing reaction Johnny there's a computer pause program everything around you just <laughs> freezes <laughs> including the music just comes to a complete sort of Sort of sudden halt. <laughs> <laughs> this ship, this this was the first ship that our species took into space, and um, I noticed your reaction there. And uh, well, you have, you may have noticed our reaction to your ship. I think it's fair to say the similarities are pretty undeniable. Do you? Is there anything else about what I've shown you so far that you recognise? Is there anything familiar about it? They're kind of staring at the ship still with sort of a, a mixture of, I guess, sort of wonder and confusion, you would sort of gauge. You had mentioned this phoenix before. Uh, now that we have seen it, we must agree it is much like our own vessel. I cannot explain it. Hmm. Neither can we. It seems, though, that in some way our races may be connected. Though... Clearly, we have no idea. Um, I suppose if, if there's nothing more that you know about this, we'll continue with the, uh, the program. And he looks to them. Is there any indication that they've got more to say? A, uh, one sort of takes another step forward. and um, I'm thinking it's an in-space moment. Okay. It's, it's kind of just come out of Earth orbit, I'd yeah. say. Like, it's, it's just broken orbit. And yeah. 
so Earth is quite big behind it. Yeah, there's been strategic editing to remove a, a rather large sovereign class starship from the background. <laughs> um, Would it be the moment where the nacelles come out? Yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah. and um, it's all poor. So you, and you know the you're able to sort of take a step around it and everything, and they they sort of take a step forward and they're kind of looking looking at the general design and everything and um again you you've seen their actual starship and you've seen the the phoenix before as well um so you know there is differences but they they're just sort of looking at it and they sort of say it is i do not know where to begin it this is this is almost strange uh ensign connor johnny well i'm i'm as confused as you are i'll, I'll be honest I think it may be in your benefit to learn more about our species, and we should certainly learn more about yours. So, uh, if we can continue. Computer, continue program. So, it immediately unpauses, the, the nacelles finish unfolding, and it goes to warp. Um, the scene fades away, um, and fades in again, on the ground, um, with, as, with the landing of uh, the Vulcan survey ship. This pivotal and historic meeting of peoples is still celebrated in the Federation as First Contact Day. Live long and prosper. Again, that uh, seeing the sort of group of humans, yeah, you know, this first meeting, you know, you they're less sort of, I mean, they're paying attention, but they seem a bit more pensive now. Mm -hmm. Under the guidance of the Vulcans, over the following decades, poverty, disease, and war were eradicated from the Earth as all the disparate nations came together to form a united Earth government. Earth's eyes were forever turned upwards towards the stars, though, and in 2119, the Warp 5 complex was opened, with the stated aim of producing a new class of starship capable of traversing the galaxy at speeds previously undreamed of. This project was to come to fruition with the launch in 2151 of the Enterprise, NX-01, under the command of Captain Jonathan Archer. We are all explorers, driven to know what's over the horizon, what's beyond our own shores. Through their voyages, Archer and his crew were to encounter many of the peoples who would go on to join the Federation, including the Andorians, Tellarites, the Nobulans, and Zindi as well as other independent star-faring powers with whom the Federation has interacted with on many occasions since, including the Klingons, Romulans, and Sulaban. Mm -hmm. Well, after, let's say, maybe 45 minutes or so, we've, we've had our moment there. Mm -hmm. Johnny's obviously familiar with all, all of this and can see that his, the guests are quite wrapped up in it, enough that he could perhaps step outside for a moment. Um, so he does, mm -hmm. and hits his communicator and calls through to Murphy. Um, Commander Murphy? Murphy here. I brought a guest down to the uh, holodeck to um, get an education on Starfleet history and uh, kind of how we got to where we are. Um, I, I've been showing them um, especially the um, ship that Zephyr and Cochrane took off on for obvious reasons. Um, their reaction to it was quite um, well, confused to say the least. I think they're as uh, perplexed as we are. There doesn't seem to be any extra level of recognition on, with our history at least, in spite of the documents that they have. Um, have you had any update on what we're going to be doing with our guests and uh, the way that we're going to be spending our day in terms of uh, the approach to the planet? Not at the moment, Connor. The captain hasn't called us back yet for a meeting. I see. If if that's the case, I'll um, I'll continue to uh, keep our guests occupied with the uh, the history, and I'll take them for lunch if necessary. Try and get them to talk to you, Conard, about their planet, about what customs they have, anything that'll make um, anything that comes to mind or uh, you think might be prudent for me to know. Let me know. Um, when the captain calls us through for a briefing, I'll give you a heads up, and you can give me the lowdown. Aye, sir. Yeah, you step back into the holodeck, and the door's closing again behind you. And so, with their successful return to 23rd century Earth, now in the company of their cetacean passengers, George and Gracie, Admiral Kirk and his heroic crew were able to prevent the ecological disaster 
which the mysterious probe's presence was threatening to inflict upon the planet. Yeah, Johnny's just going to stay in there and like he's going to ride it out until he gets cool now. Would you say you've run through this program before for your own entertainment? Um, or at least something similar? Having walked in on that moment, he's a little bit irritated that he didn't get to see the bit when Spock gave the nerve pinch to the punk on the bus. <laughs> I would be as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a great moment in this holodeck program. Yeah, that's um, definitely recorded in Starfleet. Definitely in the hit. program. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll uh, we'll leave you and the Deterians in the holodeck program for now, uh, reliving the greatest hits of uh, Starfleet history, shall we say? Okay, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, we'll be back in two weeks' time on Thursday, April 21st, uh, with a continuation of this story. Uh, in the meantime, you can find links to all of our online presences, including our social media pages, our Discord server, and our Ko-Fi page on pretendingwithdice.com. Uh, so yeah, for now, that's our show. We hope you all enjoyed it. We'll see you next time. <laughs>